we are going to talk about explanations of uh, black box AI systems. Right, so we have a black box system, it does some magic inside, and it gives us an output. How do we know that this output is actually correct? If you know, the system installed in our self-driving car is not recognizing the obstacles correctly, we're gonna crash. I'm sure that you know many people, or maybe you're one of them, who are very concerned about this prospect of using self-driving cars. I'm personally not, but I'm a computer scientist. I think, you know, I trust technology much, uh, or AI much more than I trust people, but that's, that's a side note. But may, many people will just absolutely not trust a self-driving car. So hopefully an explanation of why it behaves the way it does would help us to, to, to trust the system more. There is not always a direct link, uh, because I think that, for example, when we're going to see a doctor, maybe we trust a doctor more because they're very distinguished and they have um, a wall full of diplomas, you know, behind them, and not necessarily because they explain you all the intricacies of the treatment that they uh, prescribe for you. But in general, I think the explanations are really helpful for the users to trust and to be more confident in the AI systems that they're going to use. And, of course, we need to know whether they're correct um, in order, you know, to debug them and fix them, in, in case they're not. In general, like any system we use, we'd like to know that it is correct, right? It's working correctly, at least most of the time. So, um, in case we have this black box AI system, you know, this is not a black box, but imagine this is a box, and I feed something in, so maybe I feed uh, this picture of panda, and it tells me it's a red panda. So how do I know? So it does seem like a red panda, how do I know that it made the decision from the right reasons um, and not because it says red panda on Mondays or not because anything with a blue sky is a red panda, right? Or anything with a tree's background is suddenly a red panda. So how do we know that? So an explanation method uh, that I'm proposing to you does not involve opening the black box, luckily. So I'm opening only to get a piece of cardboard, but actually I'm going to keep the black box closed. I don't really don't want to look inside. And the reason I don't want to look inside is because A, it's complicated. B, uh, if I'm looking inside and I'm relying on a particular architecture, number of layers, the neurons, and if somebody brings me another black box for this purpose, I won't be able to look inside anymore. Um, so, and, and third, actually, because the systems, these black boxes, they're designed not to, uh, for us not to look inside, right? They train themselves, you know, you feed them training data, they somehow tune all these neurons inside with the layers, God knows what. Um, and then at the end, they say that they're trained and they will give us the output. So let's try to get an explanation without opening the black box. So I have this panda in front of me, and now I'm going to play with this image. This is how I'm going to um, construct an explanation. First of all, I'm starting to cover parts of the panda with a cardboard. So what happens if I cover this part? This is probably no longer a panda, right? This is not a panda. Uh, what happens if I cover this part? Oh, that's still a panda, right? So this part was not, not essential for it to be a panda. Okay, let's now try to decompose the top one. So we're covering now l lesser areas of the panda. Okay, right? So if we cover only this one, it's still a panda. If we cover only this one, it's still a panda. But if we cover those two, it's no longer a panda. So those two have some influence on the fact that it was classified as a panda. More formally, what we're going to do is we're going to find a minimal subset of the image of the of, of the pixels of the image that is sufficient for the for the AI system to recognize this image as a panda, and we're going to do it iteratively by throwing away the areas that actually are not relevant for it right? being a panda and refining gradually refining the areas that had some influence on it being a panda. So at the end we have this. So this was covered with gray cardboard, but a particular color of cardboard doesn't matter. And we see that the part that was uh, minimal and uh, sufficient for it to be recognized as a panda is a part, large part of panda's head. So right, effectively we can cover everything and 
Except which which will be the one. same as a human, right? We would, which will be we the would same as a human, See yeah. some shadows and not know what it is, but the moment we see that face, I, we would I com to. I completely agree with you, and this is actually how we propose to check uh, sanity of those explanations. Right? If I'm looking at this, I'm saying, yeah, it makes sense. Right? This is Banda's face. I mean, I'm not a, a biologist. Um, not a zoologist, um, but yeah, it seems to me like a panda's face, uh, and indeed, uh, this is how I'm going to to say, okay, this network uh, said that it's a red panda f for the right reasons, and not because today is Monday. I have more um, cute pictures, right? So this is a Welsh uh, Springer Spaniel, uh, and indeed it was recognized as Welsh Springer Spaniel using the same method with a cardboard. This is the area. This is the minimal and sufficient for it to be recognized as a Welsh Springer Spaniel. Now, we're getting to another very interesting application um, of those explanations. And this one is to uncover misclassifications. So, of course, so I'm looking at this uh, picture. This is a child wearing a cowboy hat. Had it been recognized as a panda, we would immediately say, no, that's nonsense. In this particular case, a black box AI system, or a neural network that we run on it, recognized it as a cowboy hat which actually seems okay, right? I mean, it is possible that this picture uh, is labeled as cowboy hat. It can be the child or cowboy hat, but, you know, cowboy hat is a perfectly legal output. But then we tried this explanation method. So we started covering it, throwing away the uh, irrelevant parts of the image, and this is an explanation we came up with. So this part of the image was a minimal part that is sufficient for it to be recognized as a cowboy hat. Okay, that's obviously wrong, right? That's a face, that's not a hat. So what happened here? So there are several things that we can uh, infer from this misclassification. Um, one, that uh, obviously network is, is wrong, right? There is, a, there is an error. Two, that um, it, instead of a cowboy hat, it learned to recognize faces. And three, the from two, we can infer that our training set was not built correctly, specifically. Um, images labeled as cowboy hats were all of people wearing cowboy hats. And now we, we even know how we can fix it. So how can we fix it? Very simply, by introducing more images of just cowboy hats without, you know, people wearing them. Just cowboy hat on the table, cowboy hat on the hanger, uh, on the hook, etc. Now, uh, we wanted to check the sanity of our explanations. Are they stable at all? What happens if I take this panda that was sitting uh, on a tree um, and put it somewhere else? Will the explanation still um, take a part of the panda? So we took this panda, we cut a part that contained an explanation. Remember, explanation was part of panda's head. We glued it on top of other images. So here is uh, our roaming panda. Um, visiting the Eiffel Tower, the moon. This is very far roaming panda. Natural History Museum, the Giza Pyramid, and I think somebody's backyard. Every one of these images was uh, labeled as a panda in the output of the uh, black box AI system. And indeed, the explanations were part of the panda's head. Which means that, that yes, um, our technique works. It works correctly. Um, and the fact that, that we found this minimal sufficient subset actually definitely is not dependent on the panda sitting on a tree in the bright sunlight with the blue sky. How many images do you send through this to test whether the test is right? Oh, thousands. Testing the test, I suppose. Yes, yes, testing the test, yes, thousands. So we, said we tested the whole image net. Um, we uncovered several interesting misclassifications similar to Cowboy Hat. None of them were that photogenic. There was something that was recognized as wool because of the texture. So no, nothing that, that interesting. Um, but, but yes, uh, most of them were recognized correctly, which is definitely not a feature of explanations, but the feature of the AI system. So the AI system worked well most of the time. Uh, and the explanations actually match, match our intuition. Um, and then with this, we did it with several images. So we just like the panda most. So that's why we the roaming panda, but this just make, uh, to make sure that, that uh, it passes the sanity check. Let's now talk a little bit about explanations produced by these techniques versus explanations generated by humans. So I have a starfish here. If I ask uh, you or 
the, the viewer, why is it a starfish? What would you say? Well, it's the shape, right? It's the shape, yes. It has, you know, five uh, arms. Um, but now I'm asking you, so what is a minimal area of this image that is sufficient for you to realize that it's a starfish? Yeah, good question. <laughs> it's a good question. So uh, probably thinking about this cardboard technique, I will, I will start covering it. We will soon discover that there, there is a symmetry to this shape. And actually, I'm saying, well, it's a starfish because of probably, you know, I see, I'm seeing these two, le two arms. And yeah, this, this is enough for it to be a starfish. Right, so this I'm covering the rest. I will still think that it's a starfish, right? But it is a symmetrical shape. Therefore, this is also probably an explanation of why it's a starfish. So we need multiple explanations in some cases. Um, in case there is a symmetry, a human will give multiple explanations. And again, we are in the realm of increasing trust. We do expect our system to be capable of giving multiple explanations. And this is definitely an important goal, not only to increase trust, but also uh, because symmetry is an important feature of some of the shapes, just from biological perspective. So the fact that this is um, a symmetric shape might, must be crucial, might be crucial for it to be recognized as a starfish. But it's not the symmetry itself, is it? Obviously, we've probably all seen starfish with a missing leg, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're still a starfish. Exactly, exactly. But you don't need yeah. it to be symmetr symmetrical for it to be recognized. It's just the symmetry helps you to have multiple reasons. That is reasons. true, okay. yes. Yes, that is true. And if we see a starfish that is partially um, obscured by sun, yeah. partially occluded by, by sand, or, you know, by uh, another fish, uh, or by the water, we would still recognize that it's, that it's a starfish. Um, and it doesn't matter, actually, which one of its arms um, is occluded, or, you know, maybe several arms, we would still recognize that it's a starfish. Yeah, I agree. So there, there is um, something here um, on the border between these explanations for partially occluded objects. Um, and the fact that it is uh, symmetrical, and actually there are several equally important parts to the starfish that, that make it a starfish, right? So what makes a starfish a starfish? Or, you know, we can even look at our famous panda. Yeah, so what makes pa a panda a panda? So we already saw one explanation, and this is a panda's face. But maybe this is not the only one. Maybe what makes panda a panda a panda is that it has this particular face, or maybe that it has a tail, uh, or maybe that it has this fur, or a particular shape of its ears. Um, so it, just like a human would uh, give several explanations to the fact that it recognizes a particular object as a panda or a cat, um, our black box AI system should also be capable of giving several explanations. Um, and this, of course, if we want um, to make sure that it classifies similar to us humans. I think this is crucial if we want to use these black box AI systems, that they classify, that they recognize objects in a similar way to us humans. Otherwise, how, how can we use them? How can we trust them? Over time, we'll be able to make small changes which will change this number and hopefully increase it until that is the category that is seen in the image and not something completely different or every time you call the method then this will be uh, less effective and in some cases then it will even slow things down because the program will never appear to stabilize.